I'm Penny Walsh. I'm a weaver and dyer, and I work for AO Textiles, developing natural and sustainable colour for fashion and furnishing fabrics. The last few weeks, I've been getting colour for textiles from things around the house and garden, and I wanted to show you a few ways of doing these. This is making a nettle mordant, which will enable the fabric to take up the dye stuff. So it's a pre-dyeing process. Pour enough water so it'll simmer, put it on the hob and leave it to simmer for about 20-25 minutes. This is a copper mordant made from copper coins. So the coins just go into the bowl. I've used some of them before so they've got a bit verdigris, they've got a bit of blue. Half and half vinegar and water. Pour it onto them and just leave the copper to leach into the liquid. You have to leave it for a day or two for that to happen. So that's the copper mordant. So now we're going to make an iron mordant and I've got old horse screws, but it could be old nails or anything, old locks, anything that's made of iron. And it's two parts water to one part vinegar. And again, pour it onto the iron material. Make sure that it covers. And this has to be left for one to two weeks in order for the mordant to form. So these are the three mordants made out of things from the garden and the house. This is the iron, which is soaked for two weeks. This is the nettle, which has simmered, and now it'll be strained. And we'll add some water to it. And this, these are the copper coins, which we'll remove the coins from. And then we'll add water, that's the nettle, the iron, the copper coins. Then we put some yarn, in each one. We put them then to simmer on a very low, that's tensile, this is wool, and these are pieces of cotton. And then we'll put some more water in and we'll raise them up to warm and leave them for about an hour. Right, so the material has now mordanted and we'll take it out of the liquid. It's soaked and it's simmered at a very low heat and it's soaked overnight. This is the nettle mordant, wool, tensile, cotton. This is the copper mordant and that's the wool, tensile, pieces of cotton. And this is the iron mordant, which actually soaked for a little bit longer. And now they're ready to put into the dye. Now we're going to do the dye stuffs prepared from things around the house. So this is avocado pips, which have been boiled for about an hour. And in this pot, we're going to put chopped beetroot, just chopped up and not peeled. And in this pot, we're going to put red cabbage, chopped red cabbage. And it's going to be with water added to it and cooked until it just starts to give colour into the water. Right, so the dye stuffs have simmered in the liquid and the liquid has now got all the dye in it. So this is the beetroot and we're strain, we'll strain that and put the um, mordanted fabric and fibre in there. Put that onto the heat to cook and then we'll strain the red cabbage so that we've just got the coloured liquid. There's the coloured liquid from the red cabbage. And we put that on to cook and we're going to put the iron mordanted fabric in there. 
give it a stir. And then the avocado, they don't really need straining because they won't get entangled. And we'll put the nettle mordanted fabric into the avocado pip colour. And then we'll simmer gently so that they start to get the colour. The beetroot, the red cabbage and the avocado. So these are the three different dye stuffs and they've simmered for a little while. Not too hot, it's not good to get them too hot. You can also use, it's not quite a household thing, but alum, mock alum is very easy to get hold of and that can also be a mordant. So now I'm going to take the stuff out of the dye baths and this is the um, avocado pips, this is the cotton and wool and the cellulose fibre and that it makes a difference which it's mordanted with because the this is the red cabbage and that's silk wool and cotton and that's a little bit of lighter cotton and sometimes the colour can look slightly different even on different qualities of the same fibre. And this is the beetroot, which will actually get lighter, it doesn't stay quite as bright as that. Cotton, silk and wool. And a little bit of soda crystals will make it pinker. And this is privet hedge, just to give a slightly different range of colour. It's a very subtle greeny grey and it's just privet leaves to make it slightly bluish and it gives a range of very subtle greens. We've taken all the material out of the dye baths now. They've simmered as long as possible, not to a very high temperature, a little bit of alum into the dye bath will bring out even more colour in some of these dyes. This is the avocado stones with a nettle mordant on cotton, linen, wool and tensile, which is a cellulosic fibre. This is the red cabbage, which had an iron mordant on wool, silk, different weights of cotton. This is beetroot on cotton, silk, linen and with a little bit of lemon juice added, which makes it turn orange. And these are the privet leaves with alum mordant. And the more privet leaves you put in, the darker they will get, and they get a slightly different shade on different fibres. Okay, so that's the methodology of getting dyes from things around the house and garden. You can use lots of flowers and plant material, leaves, even things that are past their best but they'll still have colour in them. Food waste, kitchen waste, and if you're just using them for t-shirts and scarves, you don't really need to do a light test. But if you're going to do embroidery threads or weaving threads, then just leave them for a couple of days with part of the fibre blocked out and you'll be able to see how light fast it is. So good luck with your experiments.